So we'd like to hear some message from our very own Lieutenant Governor, Josh. Thank you very much. Um, Lion John, you have an awesome vibes <laughs> come. I agree with, uh, with District Governor Sumi. Uh, and I also am very happy to witness this installation of officers. Uh, and I also uh, noticed also the leadership coming in from the various members of this uh, of this Lions Club. Uh, and Madam uh, Josie, what an awesome speech. Congratulations. And I have to tell you that uh, all of the husbands here are probably going to be upset with Tony because he might be the sweetest husband next to... Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, I want to take this time also to thank all of you for helping us defeat the pandemic because we are defeating the pandemic and that in many ways is because of all of the leadership from you um, encouraging people to follow the safety protocols um, and hopefully encouraging everybody to be vaccinated. Uh, we are in such a better place but as you know from the news there's still some threat but I'm really confident that um, over the next few weeks, you're going to see even more progress about our reopening. And the reopening means that the amount of in-person uh, activities is going to increase. And the service that you have and the projects you are going to undertake are very much needed. Um, it's very much needed right now because um, I predict that the recovery is going to be very, very fast. There is a demand to return back here to Guam. There is a, um, uh, people want to be able to go and live their lives um, in a very good way and to be together with family again. And this, of course, for many of you, this is your second family. So over the next few weeks, I wanna also say I'm very excited uh, because uh, uh, for the first time in a while, I think, we're going to have a very exciting summer because the Lions Club is going to have a summer camp program at EPAL in July. Yay. And that is going to be funded by the uh, Governor's uh, Education Assistance and Youth Empowerment Program. And what I'm gonna tell you is, Go out and recruit your children or your grandchildren, maybe, to join the camp, especially because this is going to be a good pipeline with the Leos. It's going to be very good. It's going to help us train all of the younger people, the elementary school students that are going to be providing that community service that will go back to school face to face uh, when, we come, when we return school in August. It's gonna be a very exciting time. Uh, so I wanna thank all of you. Josie, I wanna congratulate you and all of your membership. And I wanna pay, uh, pay special uh, tribute uh, and honor, of course, to our district governor, Sumi. Uh, thank you also for leading early in the pandemic. I'm not sure if you know this, but the Lions Club of Guam solicited tens of thousands of dollars in PPE that were out there to help in the first line defense of Guam. She was able to utilize her network with the lions in Japan uh, and send things over even when they were having a problem themselves. So thank you for that. And of course, I know she's being mentored by an excellent group of past district governors down here that I can see. Um, very good leadership. So I imagine, Luisa, uh, you're going to be following soon in some excellent first steps and I'm going to be uh, looking forward to continuing to partner with you and Sumi and the rest of the Lions as we continue to clean up our island and prepare ourselves for the full reopening of Guam. So thank you very much. Well, we certainly are filled with um, emotion over here and appreciation for all the things that we hear about the recognition of all the work that's been done by our club, our members over here. But 
allow me to probably have the opportunity to once again a little bit give a little summary in addition to what has been said and what has been accomplished this year. This year has truly been a challenging thing for all of us, for not only for the Guam Diamond Lions Club, but for all the clubs here in District 204 internationally, globally. We're not the only entity that experienced this problem. In the beginning of my term, I asked myself, what are we gonna do? Are we going to allow ourselves to be overshadowed by fear, to be able to just like not do anything because we can do so. Internationals are not going to be mad at us. Everybody knows that that pandemic is upon us. People are dying left and right. Hospitalization rates are quite high. We don't know what we're facing. It was during those times that we didn't even know how are we going to be. Guam is not immune. We have close to 200 people died here in Guam, and it was truly unnerving. I belong to the medical community, so I see that on the daily basis. I see that, but I challenge our group. I did challenge the group and said, yes, it is pandemic, but certainly we can do something. I have a great group of members that put together the first ever fundraising activity in the district during the pandemic. And many people said, no, it's a wrong move to do. No, it's a wrong thing for you to do. You're not gonna be able to raise money. But guess what? We certainly did. In our first fundraising, we actually netted over $5,000 just selling dollar dollar per ticket. And we did not only keep that success to our group, but we certainly elevated that and presented ourselves to our District 204 and said, hey, Madam District Governor, we would like to help and be able to put together and help not only our club, but also in the district. And because of the leadership, I believe, by the district uh, leaders in District 204 and the passion by the members of the, the Lions, the Guam Diamond Lions Club, we raised over $11,000 in there for the district to be able to continue all the things that we have. And I think that's quite commendable. Right, John? It was taken by my speech in there. I'd like to emphasize that that I consulted our membership and we said, hey guys, we're being challenged by this. We have our success. We'd like to bring that thing up to the district level. Our group, from the very beginning, from on the get-go, has really been involved with the District 204, the many activities. I recall Zoom meetings that started at seven o'clock in the morning and ending at 9.30 in the evening because of the things that we'd like to accomplish. That thing was made possible because of the Guam Diamonds Lions Club members. Our group has also been very passionate about environmental stuff. We are only requested to have one activity fulfilling the environmental uh, component of our Club Excellence Award. But guess what? Our club so far, and, uh, and we still have until the end of uh, this month, we have completed 28, that's 28 environmental projects. That's our club. We have done, we have assisted in cleaning up the road in front of uh, the um, airport twice. We have assisted the St. Dominic Senior Care Home, which is very dear to my heart. We have provided them together with Lion Josephine Benavetti, PPEs in there. We have there with Lion uh, Tess Soto, trying to find them some, uh, provide them with hand sanitizers and such. We have fed the hungry here in Guam. We have been involved with the uh, diabetes group. And here today, I'd like to present once again our opportunity in this group to be able to give back to the community. I have a good friend over here. Um, I know I graduated before her and uh, you know, 
education and being called as a little bit of a mentor over here by Tina. Tina, can I have you over here, please? Miss Tina is not yet a lion, but soon to be. She doesn't even know about it yet. <laughs> but by coming here, she'll be. Miss Tina, if you have not met her, is first and foremost a social worker by profession, social worker by heart, but she had focused her career and her attention to assist people who are afflicted with cancer. Ms. Tina has been affiliated with the American Cancer Group here in Guam and has really been a force to be reckoned with in order to assist many of those who are afflicted by cancer. In our endeavor to be able to assist the community, I have invited Ms. Tina over here to tell us a little bit about the story who she brought up to my attention about a child, a pediatric cancer patient who was actually afflicted. And it is our opportunity today to give back to the community and to be able to help that family. But before we do, I'd like to give Tina a little bit of um, opportunity to be able to Tell us a little bit about what she does and a little bit about this child that we're wanting to help. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Um, I, we've heard the stories about how challenging this past year has been with the pandemic. And we all understand that, you know, the pandemic came, many things stopped, um, but it didn't stop cancer. Um, in fact, it aggravated the situation for our families who were afraid to go visit with their doctors. Their appointments were delayed. Hospitals and clinics were limiting you know, the access. So um, it was very important for us to be able to continue to be of service to our community. And we were able to do that only through the previous years and the foundation that our community has put into assisting the American Cancer Society through our events like the Relay for Life. Um, I wave back there to Ms. Uh, Anne-Marie, who's very active with us. Um, and when it comes to childhood cancer, pediatric cancer, many of the patients, uh, the American Cancer Society, our office is not the first stop. They actually are visiting with their pediatrician, getting those reports, getting those opinions. And many of them, if not all of them, actually have to travel stateside to continue with their journey, to sometimes even find that um, final diagnosis of what is really ailing their child. And so again, the pandemic and then cancer and adding that it's a child really compounded the situation. And um, with this story was, Roy, uh, Roy used the word serendipitous when we spoke because I had just had a conversation with a volunteer of mine who had mentioned that uh, she was talking with her sister uh, about her, their friend's uh, son who was just diagnosed and all the services that the American Cancer Society would be, you know, was able to provide. And um, she was very uh, surprised at how much information she was able to share and very proud to be able to do that. And she shared that with me. And I then, you know, took some pride in knowing that, you know, our efforts are working, our community is sharing.